me, um, which I think we all have, but um, everybody here anyway. I'm Philip Archer, and um, I'm the founder and um, CEO of the Living Richly Brands, which includes um, Roaming Richly Travel, uh, Philip Archer's Living Richly, and um, the uh, Living Richly Real Estate Brokerage uh, in Texas. So um, I'm a member of the City Club. I'm thrilled to be here. And today we are going to learn how to make pizza from scratch. Um, it's a very simple recipe. It's, it's very easy to do. Um, and I will tell you that it's, we've, we've made several since we've been um, enjoying this wonderful uh, stay at home uh, staycation type you know, learn to work, you know, in 700 square feet thing that we're doing. Um, and, and we love them. So I hope that you will enjoy it as much as we do too. Um, from your ingredients, we're going to start with the dry ingredients. So um, what I'm going to do first is we're going to do our dough. Um, for those of you who might be cooking along at home, um, the, the demo is going to take less time than it will take for the dough to rise. But if you use instant rise dough, it should be fairly close by. So we'll do the dry ingredients together and then I'll assemble the pizza and then you can go back and do that um, on your own afterwards and then pop it in the oven. So, but if we were doing this at home together at the same time, the first thing you would want to do is you want to preheat your oven to 425 degrees um, and you want to have ready um, whatever you're going to have your pizza on. So my favorite tool to use, and you'll see this in my kitchen a lot, is um, I use a clay stone. Um, this is actually a Pampered Chef product. And um, Pampered Chef, uh, their stones are purchased and, and manufactured in the United States. Um, the reason that's important, um, you can go to Sir Tab and a lot of places and get clay stone. You can get terracotta stone, lots of different products. But those that are manufactured in the United States have to be tested for heavy metals. And those outside the United States, not necessarily so. So what I would say is if you're going to buy stoneware, um, make sure that you're buying a stone that is from a place, um, originated in a place that is going to test it for heavy metals. Because the last thing you want to be doing is enjoying your fabulous organic food and poisoning yourself with heavy metals because you're using clay that's got heavy metals in it. So um, I highly that recommend- That does not sound very delicious. <laughs> what you say? What was that, Glenn? That does not sound as delicious as a pizza without heavy metals. I agree. I agree with okay. Gwen. Yay, Gwen's with us. Yay. God. I am. Uh, I. I. I have to completely say that I am in full agreement with that, Gwen. A heavy metal pizza, it just isn't going to taste as good. So I'm Captain Obvious on this call. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so you'll have your pizza stone ready. So I've got it over here too. When you're using a pampered chef pizza stone, um, I always put, um, y'all may see the dish towel underneath this. I put a dish towel between my granite and my stone so that when you're pushing down the stone and it moves around, you don't scratch your countertops because it is porous and it can scratch. So um, you have to be careful with that. The first thing we're gonna do is start with our dry ingredients. And so we're gonna start with one cup of flour you can really use whatever, you know, kind of, you know, flour you want. I use your standard, you know, um, unbleached and rich flour, you know, and this is like the signature brand from Safeway. So there's nothing super, super fancy about my flour. Um, and as you'll see, my, my measuring cup is actually not fancy either. It's missing the handle. So um, we're gonna start with a cup of flour. And then we're going to add our dry yeast. I get the rapid rise instant yeast. Um, and for those of you who were able to find it for this demonstration, I'm super, super proud of you. Um, we have our next batch on order from Amazon and we're expecting it on the 20th. So I don't know who went out and bought all the dry yeast, but like they're gonna bake. They better be making some fabulous pizzas because they're making it difficult for the rest. It's of really hard to find. It is. You're right. It is. It is, right? At least we now have sugar and flour and stuff. So um, that's, that's really, really, and, and, we've, and you can order dry yeast on Amazon. So, um, so it is available, it's just difficult to get. So that was my package of yeast. Um, we're gonna add um, a one and a half teaspoons of sugar, three quarter teaspoon of salt, Um, I'm not particularly picky about what salt you use. We use like a pink Himalayan salt, um, but that's just because that's what we keep in our kitchen. And then um, this is optional, but I like to season my, um, my crust as well as the pie. 
And so I use um, a Napa Valley blend from uh, uh, Stonehouse. And so Stonehouse is in Napa Valley. And um, they actually have, for those of you who are here in the city, they have um, a store at the Ferry Building. And they're actually open during the farmer's market. So you can get their products now. Um, I, I use their products because they, um, they're, they're fresh. So you're never getting anything more than 30 days old. They only do a month in advance. And they have the most incredible blends ever. So um, this one has got um, sun-dried tomatoes, lemon peel, fennel, black pepper, chili, garlic, citric acid, sea salt, and rosemary um, and pepper. So it's a typical Italian blend. So um, what I, do they I, call that? What do they call that one, Philip? This one's called Napa Valley. Delicious. It, Sounds oh, great. Yeah, and bruschetta. Like this makes the most incredible bruschetta. And instead of having to do all the herbs and stuff, you just get your bruschetta ready. You sprinkle herbs on. You're good to go. Same thing with like if you wanted to do um, like a salad with tomatoes and your olive oil, and you just wanted a little spice to that, you get a little balls of You know, hit it with this, this is great. It um, makes a great I'm gift. Gonna, it makes a fabulous gift, and you're buying local, you're buying local, and we're supporting the city, and this is something you can do during the quarantine, is if you're going to the farmer's market down at the ferry building, just go inside, and Stonehouse will be open. Tell them Philip Archer sent you, ha ha. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, make sure you give them your phone number because they'll set up an account for you. And every time you get 100 points, you get a discount. And so and we, we use it a lot. So we um, we definitely worth it. But I'm going to add, um, most people would probably do maybe one and a half, uh, one, one and a half uh, tablespoons. Um, I, I'm a heavy seasoner, so I'm going to say one to two for us. It just depends on how much, you know, you like uh, to have your crust seasoned. But... I like a nice seasoned crust. And I'm gonna set that aside because I'm gonna save it for um, when we do our pie. I'm gonna put a little bit on the cheese on our pie as well. Now, this is really, really important. Anytime that you're doing dry ingredients, well, first, this is really, really important. Anytime you're cooking, you really should have a cocktail. And a cocktail so for the you all have cocktails. Cheers. Thank you, Van. Um, <laughs> so, whatever. There we go. So you've got your dry ingredients, and you want to stir these and mix them very well first. Um, you can stir them with a spoon. Um, I'm just using the bowl and the spoon I'm going to use for the dough, and you do want a wooden spoon for that. But you can use a spoon or a whisk, however you want to do it. But you just want to get everything nice and mixed together so that you see kind of an even um, spread on all of your ingredients. So that's your dry ingredients. The next thing we want to do is we want to add two tablespoons of olive oil. Um, you, you can also get your olive oil at Stonehouse. <laughs> and I actually use, um, you can get these there as well, the little spouts. Um, but I use um, recycled wine bottles to keep my oil, oil on my <laughs> counter. Um, and number one, it's kind of cool and a neat little thing to have on your counter. It doesn't look unusual. Um, but you're also recycling. So I always love the opportunity to do that. So there are two tablespoons of olive oil. And then we're going to put three quarters of a cup of warm water. And I'll tell you, the hotter the water, the better the rise is going to be on your yeast. So I would get your water good and warm, if y'all can hear that. And boom, look at that. I'm getting really good at this. So I've got three quarters of a cup of warm water. Um, I'm going to add most of the water. I'm going to stir a little bit. Can hear you stirring. And you can see how it's starting to come together, get a little sticky. Add the rest of your water. And it's going to get really sticky. Also, um, try to get all of your dry ingredients into this first little ball. You're going to add flour again to this. But um, I feel like the mixture will end up doing better and being more well mixed if you get this first part really, really well mixed. So can you all see that? Yeah, so we've got it all mixed together. And then we're just going to add another cup 
some of you may end up adding a little bit more depending on your flour. Um, it's two to two and a third cups of flour. All right, so here's my second cup of flour. Hey, I'll leave this over here in case I need it. This is where it gets fun because your dough is going to start getting really, really, it's going to start congealing. Oh, somebody had a question? Oh, I thought someone had a question. No, fine. Your dough is going to get, start getting really, really um, rubbery at this point, and that's a good thing. It's just difficult to work with, and that's why you want to use a wooden spoon. Um, and after I get about this point, I actually use my hands. Um, I just feel like I get a better, um, you know, a better dough ball at the end that's better mixed by using my hands. So you just want to push your dough down, flip it over a little bit to get the other flour, and keep doing that until you have all of the flour in the bowl. And I'll show you when we get there. But as you can see, I'm picking up more and more flour every time. You just want to keep doing that. This is actually kind of fun. This is also great. Kids love doing this. So if you've got kids at home or if you've got grandkids or nieces and nephews, this is a recipe that you can do with them and they can help. Um, and they will, they'll have a lot of fun. Um, in fact, you can, you know, if, if you could do it with a group of kids, let them all make them and you could freeze the extra. So that's right. the other thing that I love about this recipe is um, we'll end up, I did a, a ball earlier so that y'all wouldn't have to wait forever for our dough ball to rise. And so um, one of these, this one is actually gonna end up when it rises, it's gonna go into the freezer and then we'll pull it out on another day and we'll already have our pizza crust ready. So it's just like those, those doughs, um, those rolls that you get, the dough balls that you throw mm -hmm. in the oven, they become a roll. Same basic concept. But as you so can when see, you put it, when you more. put it in the freezer, Philip, do you wrap it like in a uh, saran wrap? I do. I wrap the ball in saran wrap or you can put it in a glad bag. It doesn't really matter. Something um, like plastic. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then when or you pull plastic. it out, do you just let it sit around for like an hour to thaw out? Yeah, I usually, so if I were going to do it, um, let's say that I was going to make a pizza at lunchtime, I'd probably pull the ball out in the morning um, because you never know if it's going to rise a little bit more. You know, um, as it warms up, that yeast may reactivate and might rise up a little bit more. So I would give it, you know, the minimum you want to give it is 30 minutes, you know. But I would, you know, if you've frozen it, especially if it's really, really frozen, I would probably pull it out in the morning and, and let it sit. It's not gonna hurt it to sit. Okay. Um, or you can pull it out the night before and stick it in the refrigerator. Same right. thing. Yeah. And then, and, and then in the morning, just pull it out and let it sit for 30 minutes. But as y'all can see, you kind of see how I've gotten all done, okay? And then if you wipe along the sides and just get the rest of it, and then you just want to make sure that there's nothing falling off, like these little pieces here. You want to place them back in, fold it back in, and when you've got everything out of the ball, bowl, you're going to give this a little bit of hand kneading. And basically what you're wanting to do with the hand kneading is there, you know, anytime you make dough, you're going to have some pieces that are a little bit more moist than others. So you just don't want a really, really dry piece to be lodged in there because it's not going to bake the same way the other ones are. So if you knead it like this with your hands, you'll break all that up and you'll get a nice consistent ball. And it should look like this. So. Like a baby bottom. It looks like a little bee. That's right. So I'm going to do a really quick change here, and I'm going to pull one that's been sitting for an hour and show you what your ball will look like when it's done. You can use that same bowl. Yep. The magic of television. The magic of television. Oh.
Oh, I know. It's really funny. Gwen and I have many, many conversations over, Mar over JC's margaritas or a glass of wine. And um, so I used to do, um, I actually used to be the co-host of Celebrity U Television in Dallas. We had a radio and television show. And I hosted the Philip Archer's Living Richly segment every week. And once a week, I would do a cooking demonstration. So um, I've done this a few times. And it's really funny because I was like, Gwen, do it in my kitchen on Zoom. It's way different. I don't have like cameramen. I don't have a studio. It's like we got one phone. Oh, here. Forget it. This is this is professional. I'm telling you. I'm so. I this is so awesome. <laughs> You're so sweet. But this is what it's going to look like. So look at the difference between before and after. So you've got a nice risen dough ball, and you want to pull that out, and we'll play with that in a second. So what y'all are going to be doing with your dough ball is you're going to put it in a, um, you're going to use another tablespoon of olive oil to oil your bowl. And then you're going to put your dough ball in there. And since we're going to be letting ours sit for a while, I'm going to go ahead and put some saran wrap over it. Sip. And you're going to set that aside for 30 minutes minimum. And then you'll end up with something that looks like this. Now, when you pull this one out, you want to knead it again, because as your dough rises, one of the things it does is it gets a lot of air in it, because it's basically rising and it's absorbing air from the outside. So you want to actually knead it back down to about the same size it was when you originally started. That's how you'll know that you've gotten all the air out. Um, and that's, that's really, really important. It keeps it from getting bubbles. Um, you know, it's, it's awful when you put together this beautiful pizza and you left a big bubble in there and you, know, you pull your pizza out and all the toppings have gone around to the side. There's this big empty bubble in the middle. So, <laughs> so you can't really over knead it. Um, I mean, I'm sure you could, but I don't think you would. So um, you know, give it a couple of minutes of kneading with your hands. Unless you're really, really needy. Really needy. Thank you. That's right. Okay, and here we go. So now what we want to do is also this is a 15-inch round stone. So it's about the size of a typical large pizza. So this will make a typical large pizza, you know, feed two to three people. Kevin and I actually can't eat a whole one of them. Well, I mean, I'm sure we could. Oh, we could. <laughs> oh, we could. It's probably possible, but it's not something that we would do. Um, so um, the next thing you want to do is you want to start pressing your ball down onto your stone. If you've got a brand new stone, you may want to spray that stone. As you can see, my stone is very, very dark around the edges. When you get these stones, they're gonna be cream colored. And as you use them over time, they're gonna absorb the fat um, out of um, your, your cooking. And it actually seasons the stone and they become more and more nonstick as they live on. So um, a, a lot of people go, is that sanitary? And I remind them that when you put this stone in the oven, you're typically gonna be putting it in the oven that's 350 degrees or higher um, for a significant amount of time. So, you know, I'm pretty sure that would even kill coronavirus. <laughs> so, um, but we're gonna start this process. And this is, this is where you really get, this is good exercise. Um, you wanna press from the center outward and your dough will stretch out. And a lot of people go, but it keeps coming back. And it does. It's like Stretch Armstrong. For those of you who are kids of a certain age, um, I had a Stretch Armstrong when I was a kid. And this dough feels exactly like Stretch Armstrong. Um, but you want to get it stretched out. You can flip it over. That sometimes will help you get a little bit more stretch on it. And I'm not talented enough to spin it over my head. I probably am talented enough. It's just, I'm not that desperate for entertainment. So, um, I hope y'all are. I want to see it. <laughs> do it, do it. Do it. Um, do it. <laughs> what if, it. It's, um, if you just have like a pizza pan and not a stone, you could do that, right? Um, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You can do it. You could literally do it. You don't have to have a stone. I got a cookie sheet or whatever. Cookie sheet's fine, yeah. Yeah, the difference, the reason that, and that's a great question, Gwen, I'm, I'm gonna grab my handy dandy, we now live in 700 square feet, um, rolling pin. So and, um, 
But that's actually a really, really good question, Gwen. So the reason a lot of people ask me, why do I prefer stone over metal? Um, and metal is just fine. And people have been cooking on metal pizza pans for years. You'll notice though, when you go to a pizza restaurant, their metal pans will have a mesh between the pan and the pizza. And that, that mesh is so that the, they can have some airflow underneath the dough. So the reason that I like using stone is because um, it is, the stones are porous because they're clay. And so as the clay heats up, it also allows um, air to circulate through your, your food while it's cooking because the stones are porous. And so you really get a really nice crispness. Um, and um, if you're using a stone that's like a covered dish, I like to use a roasting stone a lot. Um, you won't ever get meat as moist as you're gonna get if you bake it in a roasting dish that's stone. So, um, but you can use any kind of, you know, any kind of pizza pan, metal one, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. This is the really, really fun part. This is how I get my exercise these days, is rolling this pan, and as you can see, can y'all see that it's, we're slowly getting to the edges? Oh yeah. Yep, yeah. so, um, it, this is probably the most time consuming part of the whole thing. <laughs> Don't put your hand through that glass, no trips to the hospital right now. I promise, I promise. These are, these are very, very high quality crate and barrel glasses. Very, if I was gonna say that I know those are from crate and barrel, I recognize them. <laughs> so, so Gwen, um, we, had a, uh, we had a crate and barrel outlet in Dallas oh. and the Trinity River that runs through Dallas ran right next to my neighborhood, Oak Cliff. And on the other side of that river was the design district and that's where they put the crate and barrel outlet. So, I can ride my bike to the Crate and Barrel outlet. And so, uh, yeah, oh, listen, I was in there all the time. They were like, what are you here for now? <laughs> you never know till you look around. I'm just saying, just saying. I've never walked out of a Crate and Barrel and be handed. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's impossible. We had a Crate and Barrel outlet here forever, right in Berkeley over on 4th Street. Oh. And um, I used, if I was on that side of the bay, I just my car would just go there automatically. I was, <laughs> I don't know how many times people would call me and say, where are you? And I'd be like, um, why? Bike riding, <laughs> they're like, well, we saw you leave the office and we knew you were heading home and we're in front of your house and we just thought you'd be here. And I'm like, oh, I'll be there in five minutes. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you busted me out at the Crate and Barrel outlet. Oh. I drove one day, as I used to always do, and my car would just go there if I was over there. Drove up to the Crate and Barrel outlet last year. And there was like hurricane fencing around it and the walls were gone and it was empty. Oh, no. And they had left. You yeah. know, yeah. my car used to do that too. Sat there in my car with my mouth hanging open, blocking traffic for like a solid five to eight minutes going, well, up to, uh, they closed. My car used to do that too, but except it was McDonald's. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> oh, that's like, you know, I'll never forget when they they can't they closed the Pier 1 Design Center in Dallas because it took me forever to get a professional card for Pier 1. And I got my professional card and like a year later they closed it. And I was rude. like, that is just Yeah, I'm no, like that's rude. Rude. I get over. It I is, it, not fully it, over the crate and barrel clothing closing. <laughs> is, it, is, is there a Crate and Barrel outlet store in the Bay Area somewhere now? No, I don't think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there any outlet? <laughs> Y'all, I wish you could see this dough live. I have to tell you, this is, this is some beautiful dough. You're, you're excited about your dinner tonight. That's right. I'm we excited. Almost... There's an outlet in Berkeley that I highly recommend. Which, wait, where? Serena and Lily over in Berkeley. Oh. Wow. Oh, it is just fantastic. You know, Gwen, when life gets back to normal, we should arrange a, um, we should arrange like, you know, a, a little shopping trip for people to go to some of those places. We can all meet at the club, go shopping, 
And then we could come back. We could do it like the afternoon before margaritas on a Tuesday. Ooh, yeah. Sure. And then come yeah, back and, and the outlet you know, is most definitely worth um, worth the trip. It's a find, and a lot of people awesome. don't know about it. Then if you go on Margarita Tuesday, then you can drink away. That's right. The we buyer's can, remorse. We can come back. And and JC will take care of us oh, when it comes to our, our you know them. when it comes to our beverages. Okay, so whoop whoop. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Hi, Eric. I want y'all to know that I am sweating. I am sweating inside this Ted Baker shirt that my husband bought me for Christmas. <laughs> it's creating. <laughs> That's a great looking crest. So the next thing we want to do is we just want to roll the edges over, and I'm going to tilt this. Can y'all see that? No, tilt it up more. Like that? Uh, Great. Right. Yeah. Is that all right? Okay. And so you're just going to roll the edges over until you're about a half an inch from the edge of your uh, stone or pan. And I'll go around so you this don't lose way. Any sauce? Where do you sauce? Yeah. I mean, so no, you don't so lose so you any. Don't lose any. Oh, so you don't lose any. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. You definitely want to do this first because it can be really messy. If you do, I know people do the sauce and then do this, and I, that just hasn't ever worked out well for me. <laughs> so, yeah. so I like to make my edge first. Um, with pizza dough, you're gonna have to remember, you've gotta kind of pinch it down because it's very, very rubbery. And if you don't, it'll just pop back up. But there we go. All right, so that's what this should look like. The thing of beauty. There we go. So your third tablespoon of olive oil is going to be for your dough. And so I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on here. And I like to just use a tablespoon to go back over and spread my oil. And you just want to get a nice, you know, cover on your, on your uh, pie. The olive oil, you want to cover not only the, the base of the pie, but you also want to get it up on the edges. <coughs> so once you've got your base, I usually spread it around like that. And then I'll come back and actually use my fingers and I'll brush it up over the sides. Will that brown your it, edges? It will. It'll give it all that nice, even color. Mm. Um, and the other thing you can use too, Gwen, is if you want a really dark crust, um, you can actually use a whole egg as opposed to using the egg white. And the egg white is going to give you a really light, flaky sheen and an entire egg not just the white beaten, will give you a darker sheen. So um, you'll notice that when wow. people make calzones, they'll use the, uh, the whole egg and beat it and brush it over as opposed to just the egg whites. This dough is also a great recipe for calzones. So we, um, we did a double recipe of this. Hey, um, babe. A, it wasn't double. We did a hey, double hey. The, last time, the last time we did this, we, um, we had the extra dough left over and I cut it into quarters on a square and I took the leftover stuffing we had from our chicken pot pie and made chicken calzones um, with this dough. So you can also use the dough for that. So the awesome. dough recipe is very versatile. And then next you want to bring in your tomato sauce. So these are going to be our ingredients for actually assembling the pie. And um, just regular old tomato sauce. Um, if you get a can, it's about it's about a third, fourth of a can. Um, how many ounces is it on, on the on the recipe? It is five ounces on the recipe, so that's about right. And same thing with the tomato sauce. I just splash it on the pie, and then. You want to spread it around and get a nice layer, but you want to keep it off the edges. So off the crust. Hey, Philip. Yes. 
Is that tomato sauce uh, only tomato sauce, or does it contain other ingredients? It's like just plain old tomato sauce. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Just plain old. Now, some people. Now, I will tell you, some people like to spice up their tomato sauce first. Um, I and and then they don't put it on the pie. I like to put my spices on the pie and in the crust. But it's you know, if you've got a good um, recipe for like you know a you know a a um, a sauce. Then, then that's totally cool. You can kind of, you know, I kind of, I kind of think of cooking the way that Letitia does wine pivot. Is if you like the way it tastes, it's good. Yeah. So. Yeah, like know. a jarred marinara or something. If you've got that, it would work. Yeah, absolutely. And two, if you like it thicker, you can add, um, you can actually add tomato paste to a can of tomato sauce, and it'll thicken up your your sauce. Um, but for us, it just, you know, I just use regular old tomato sauce. And so you're going to have a nice, even spread. Thank you. So I have, you'll notice here, I have two different cheeses, pepperoni, and then I have our other add-ins here, our um, uh, peppers, our t um, mushrooms, and our olives. And onion. Uh, and onion. So... You're going to do your, I'm going to do the base with mozzarella. So I've got eight ounces of mozzarella. And you just want to get it nice and even. And Gwen, a lot of people will actually um, put the tomato sauce on and then they'll sprinkle their extra spices over it. I like to do two cheeses. And so I actually sprinkle my, um, my seasoning over the cheese, the first layer of cheese. Mm. Um, and that way you've got it in the crust and then you've got it also with the other ingredients as opposed to in and on the crust only. I kind of want to enjoy it. So you've got a nice layer of mozzarella for your first layer. Um, does anybody like need Ida to Garten says lots of layers of flavor. <laughs> lots of layers of flavor. That is right. Um, do you, um, does anybody need me to demonstrate how I chop up the, you know, how we chop the olives or the peppers or any of that stuff? Okay, cool. Yeah. So, and that on those, I, I like chunky stuff, so some people do it minced, some people do it bigger chunk, some people do it in between. Really, it's just personal taste. So you chop it to the size that works for you. And I've found that with this level of ingredients, about half a cup is about the most you want, or you'll end up with a really, really thick pizza. Um, so I'm going back over the top of this with my Napa Valley. So what if you're lactose intolerant? If you're lactose intolerant, um, then uh, there are definitely things that you could use um, instead of cheese. Um, I would have to actually look up a, a couple of good recipes and give you um, give you some recommendations for that. But there are things that you can do um, instead of cheese. Um, it, you know, it, it's the the cheese really is just to bind it together. Um, mm -hmm. So being, I will figure out, I, I know I can find a lactose intolerant pizza recipe. So I will do that. But, and, um, but can and you use goat that. cheese? Do I? Can you use goat cheese? Yeah, you could use goat cheese. Goat cheese is a little harder. I don't know how it's going to melt. Um, so I would, and I've actually never done a lactose intolerant one. So I would, um, uh, I, I would like to, I'd like to see what other people recommend before I yeah. you know, just jump out there and. And say I've you had a cheese. I've had a cheeseless pizza before with, with actually with goat cheese. Yeah. And, um, uh, they, you know, if you think of like Greek flavors, even. Yeah. You know, like lamb sausage or um, um, and, and basil and goat cheese. Um, and so it's more like clumps of goat cheese right on the red sauce. Okay. And <laughs> layer. That's what I was thinking. There's a pizza nearby okay. here that people do that they do um, with the red sauce and then they layer like um kind of big pieces of sausage and pieces of like kale and um peppers and stuff yep so there's lots of other stuff just sitting on the red sauce and it does kind of tend and mushrooms and they do tend to kind of fall off but you just have to balance it and get it in your mouth 
Yeah, and, and with a harder cheese that's gonna chunk like that, the key is to space it on your pizza and make sure you have plenty of other ingredients that are well spaced as well, because it's gonna be a lot more important. Each bite is gonna need to have all the elements. So it's like little, little, little drops of cheese, because the goat cheese really doesn't, doesn't melt. It doesn't really melt, just yeah. Just sprinkle it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of like what it would be on a salad. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we have our, um, we've got our cheese, we've got our spice, and then um, I've got our mixture of toppings. So these are basically, I just um, sliced uh, mushrooms and then cut them in half because I have big mushrooms. And then we sliced olives, I diced onions, and I diced a red pepper. Gorgeous. Thank you. So we're gonna do that next. And you just wanna get everything even as possible. And remember, perfection is a goal, not a reality. <laughs> so yeah. it's, I want to encourage you to cook. I don't want you to be afraid of it. Um, and you know, I lived with a chef for 17 years and people were always afraid to have us come eat at their house because they were like intimidated. And I was like, listen, you know, you don't need to be intimidated. A, 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 a decent <laughs> chef is gonna be thrilled that somebody else is cooking and they're not gonna be snotty about the food. So um, anybody can learn, anybody can learn. All right, so here are our toppings. Gorgeous. And then, gorgeous. This is a layer of Parmesan uh, Reggiano, oh, I'm sorry, Parmesan Romano um, that I like to put on as well. And so I'm gonna do that. And then the very last thing we do is our pepperonis. Hey, Phil. Yes, sir. Yeah, DoorDash has waived all delivery fees. What about, what about you guys? What does it cost to deliver this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm billable at 250 an hour. <laughs> no, 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 I'm talking about the pizza delivery. <laughs> um, why are you guys all planning to come to Marin? Because he's bringing it over here. <laughs> now y'all, now y'all don't fight. Y'all be nice. We're, fighting, we're all fighting over you. Y'all share. Hey, listen, let me tell you something. I think that as soon as this is over, we like, uh, if there's room in the kitchen, even if there's not, we should have a pizza making party. That would be fun. At the club, and we can make our own pizzas and bake them off and yeah, sit in the bar. Really I think it'd be fun. Sure yeah. So that's so. There's the Parmesan Romano, and then we're just gonna add our uh, pepperoni. And you can get thicker or or thin slice. These are thick slice. Um, the pizza that you saw the picture of on the recipe is thin slice, which is what we prefer. Prefer, but you know you you kind of use what you can get. So I always start in the center when I've got thick ones and kind of move out because that way you can readjust and make sure you got a nice pretty pizza. I love pepperonis. I'm wondering why you're doing it last and not first. Um, so a lot of people um, put their pepperoni on right over the sauce and pepperonis are kind of big. And so what I've noticed is a lot of times if you find a pepperoni that's lower on the pizza, Mm -hmm. it drags a bunch of your topping off and then you have a bunch of topping in your mouth and a blank pizza slice and it doesn't crisp up and um and, it, and so i like to do it i like to do the pepperoni last because then when you take a bite of the pizza if you're wanting a bite with pepperoni in it it's a lot easier to get your bite number one because you can see it. it but number two it won't um it won't stick plus it seems like it's like the theory of cooking a chicken um, that drips down onto your potatoes and carrots and onions. Like the pepperoni is going to kind of heat up and then drip down into the rest of the pizza. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. It's, that's one of the reasons, too, that I like to put my, um, uh, my, my tomato sauce down and then my mozzarella down is because you're not going to get a bite of mozzarella that doesn't have the, the, the palate of the other flavors in it. So you, I feel like doing it this way, you get a much more balanced um, taste every time that you bite into the pie. So that's, that's kind of the method to my madness. 
Those are, do I see here? Did you want to do your other season? I did already. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and this Stunning. is the finished product. It's perfect. Yay! So this goes into the oven um, for uh, 15 to 20 minutes. And, and actually, if you do it like this, it's probably going to be 20, maybe 22 minutes for a large pie. And you basically just want to keep an eye on it. You don't want your pepperonis to get burned, um, but you want them to start crisping a little bit. So 425 degree oven um, for about 20 minutes. And then I would let it sit for five minutes when you're done. And then you're good to go. So, so you don't have volcanic is, cheese in your mouth? Do I what? So you don't have volcanic cheese in your mouth? So well, you I exactly, so you don't have volcanic cheese in your mouth. Right. So you don't burn yourself. Right. Um, yeah, that's, it's always good to let it, let it sit for a little bit. And it's also going to firm up a little when it gets out. Um, so it's just like anything else. Like when you see a lot of people, um, they'll see a recipe for lamb, and it says let the lamb rest. And they don't know why. And it actually continues to cook a little bit, and then it also loosens up when it's not exposed to the high heat. And so it makes it just easier to consume and more enjoyable. Um, same thing with, you know, baking. If you let it, you know, let it sit for a little bit, um, you're gonna have a different experience than if you were to just jump right in and eat it right away. Gorgeous. Thank you. Anybody yeah, got questions? You. That was yeah, awesome. How did you get your haircut? Yeah. What are you making next? <laughs> yeah, so since we're all quarantined, y'all send, you know, Marie and um, Gwen recommendations. I'm glad to come back and do this on something else as well. Uh, that's a good thing yeah. because you're, ap you're absolutely born to it and we just got to keep you going. Oh, you're so sweet. This you is know, I, I I'm taking that. <laughs> this is as much fun as I've had in the last three weeks, so. I am. I, I, I miss. I miss engaging with my people um, in that program. The, the the year and a half that we had, um, you know, Celebrity U, it was so fun, um, and it took up a lot of time. But it was it was just one of the funnest things I've ever ever done. And so, you know, uh, I am your typical um, media whore. <laughs> So all you have to say is really? an opportunity to be on TV and I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> all you have to say is look right into the camera. Right, right over right. here. Philip, you're just Thanks, here. I mean, come on. If you're good at it, you're good at it. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's something that I really, really enjoy. Um, I enjoy doing it. Um, I enjoy, um, what's really fun is when you run into people later, and you've never met them, but they've followed you. And they're like, they don't remember, they might even not remember your name, but they go, you're the pizza guy or you're the lamb guy. And you're walking through an airport and you're like, why is this lady telling me I'm the lamb guy? You know, and it's like, because that's how she remembers me is that she's got that video saved on her favorites. And every time she makes lamb, I walk her through it, you know? So that's, it makes for interesting stories. It makes for interesting stories. I love that. <laughs> When but Marie, I want to say, I want to say to you, Gwen and Marie, that you know, just given what has transpired over the last month or two, um, I want to salute you guys for um, reaching out to us and and making sure we stay involved and making sure the club is vibrant, even when we can't be there commuting in person. Um, you know, we're everybody's stressed. It's it's a difficult time for everybody. And for y'all to be able to put stuff together and continue that information and that communication from home um, when, we're, when we're in the midst of this, I just want to salute you for that. Oh, well, you're so sweet. Oh, we're just, thank goodness you. for um, some talented members that have a break. We're checked up yeah, um, for us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me uh, interrupt quickly to say that Philip and I had discussed very clearly that we would start this at 4.30. And oh. we ended up with this at four o'clock in the newsletter because doing stuff from home sometimes. You <laughs> uh, I don't know the 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 nor. I mean, a I have one screen on my one laptop. Not to, I can't do two things at once. So my normal oh, I know. I do things I'm dying. every single day, and I'm kind of a dork. So. Um, well, I, you know, I, I could have also looked at the invitation when you sent it out.